Everyone assumes south-facing roofs are the gold standard for solar panels, and for good reason. But here's what most people don't know. If you've got an east-west-facing property, you might actually be sitting on a solar gold mine. In the next few minutes, I'll show you how and why. Hi there, welcome back to Integrate Sun's channel. If you live in the northern hemisphere, the sun moves across the sky from east to west, hitting its peak directly south at midday. This is why many believe you need a south-facing roof for solar panels to work well. If your roof doesn't face south, some people think solar isn't worth it. With properties facing all sorts of directions across the country, does that mean many homes are just out of luck? In this video, I'll explore the generation profiles of solar arrays on south, east, west, and even north-facing roofs, and why an east-west setup might actually have advantages over a south-facing one. Plus, we'll tackle the big question. Can panels on both east and west roofs outperform a south and north setup? Let's get started. For our analysis, we're looking at two identical properties. The property on the left has one roof facing east and another facing west, while the property on the right has a south facing roof. Naturally, the second property also has a north facing roof, which we'll look at later. We're assuming both properties are in the northern hemisphere, specifically somewhere in the US Southwest. If you're in the southern hemisphere, just flip the directions. Think north when I say south and vice versa. East and west stay the same. Now let's put solar panels on the east, west, south, and north roofs. For this comparison, we're using modern 435 watt solar panels, specifically Qcell's Qtron BLK models, fitting two rows of six panels on each roof section. That gives us 12 panels total per roof, which equals a 5.22 kilowatt system. That's kilowatt peak, the standard way to measure solar array size. We'll place the same number of panels on the east, west, and north roofs. You might wonder if we should split the 16 panels from the south roof into eight for east and eight for west for a fair comparison. That's a valid point, but since solar panels are relatively cheap compared to installation costs, you'd likely maximize panels on any roof you use. So we'll stick with the same number of panels on each roof. Plus with the federal 30% solar tax credit, applying to your entire system cost Maximizing your roof space makes even more financial sense. Before diving into the numbers, let's examine how different roof orientations actually generate power throughout the day. A south-facing array in the U.S. during summer produces what we call a symmetrical bell curve. Think of it like a mountain. It starts generating power in the early morning, climbs to peak around midday when sunlight is strongest, then slopes down by early evening. The area under this curve represents the total energy generated daily, often far more than a household needs. Now here's where it gets interesting. When we overlay your typical home energy usage, higher in morning and evening, lower during the day, we spot three problems with that perfect south-facing generation. First, you're using energy for breakfast and getting ready, but solar generation is still ramping up, so you're pulling from the grid. Second, the same thing happens during your evening routine when you're cooking dinner or running the dishwasher, but solar output has already dropped off. And third, right around midday when solar is cranking out maximum power, most people are at work using barely any energy at home. What do you do with all that excess midday power? You've got several options, depending on your state's policies. If you're in a state with good net metering, your utility essentially runs your meter backward giving you full retail credit for excess generation. You can also store excess power in a home battery system. Check our battery sizing video in the description for more on that. Or you can time your heavy appliances like washing machines and pool pumps to run during those peak solar hours. Even with a battery in summer, you might fill it by mid-morning in many sunny states, leaving excess generation. This is where your state's solar policies really matter. Some utilities are moving away from generous net metering, making the timing of your generation more critical. Now, let's compare this to our east-west property. The east-facing array's generation profile looks completely different. It's skewed toward morning, capturing sunlight soon after sunrise, but tapering off by late morning. The west-facing array is essentially a mirror image, starting low but ramping up through the afternoon and extending well into early evening. Here's the game changer. When you combine east and west arrays, you get almost double the generation of the south array, and it's spread across the entire day, matching your actual energy usage patterns much better. Normalizing the east-west profile against the south shows it extends generation at both ends of the day. 
This could mean needing a smaller battery system, and it gives you a much longer window to run heavy appliances without drawing from the grid. If you're enjoying these videos, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. It really helps spread the word. Now let's look at real-world annual generation data for our east, west, south, and north arrays. For this analysis, I've used a typical location in Phoenix, Arizona, chosen because it represents excellent solar conditions that many U.S. homeowners can relate to, especially in the growing Southwest markets. I've entered our South Array details into PV Watts, the U.S. standard solar calculator from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, 12 panels at 435 watts each, totaling 5.22 kilowatts peak, oriented at 180 degrees south with a 20 degree tilt, optimal for this latitude. You can adjust the tilt angle based on your specific location for optimal performance. The results show our South Array generating 9,677 kilowatt hours annually. That's a solid performance that would cover most American homes' electricity needs. Switching to east orientation, 90 degrees, the annual generation drops to 7,591 kilowatt hours. For west, 270 degrees, it's 8,195 kilowatt hours, notably higher than east due to clearer afternoon skies in this region. Finally, the north array, zero degrees, produces 5,232 kilowatt hours. Comparing these numbers, the south-facing array leads among individual orientations, generating about 27% more than the East Array and 18% more than the West Array. But here's where it gets exciting. Combining East and West Arrays yields 15,786 kilowatt hours annually. That's 63% more than the South Array alone. So if you have an East-West property and maximize panels on both roofs, you'll significantly outperform a neighbor with a South-facing roof, even with the same total number of panels. What about South plus North versus East plus West? Adding South, 9,677 kilowatt hours, and North, 5,232 kilowatt hours, gives 14,909 kilowatt hours, while East plus West gives 15,786 kilowatt hours. That's a win for East-West by about 6%. Keep in mind, these numbers will vary based on your specific location, with the East-West advantage being most pronounced in sunnier climates. It seems East and West really do come out on top, but there's an even more compelling financial reason why. There's another compelling reason East-West setups shine, especially in today's evolving solar market. The U.S. has a patchwork of solar policies that vary dramatically by state. Most states still offer net metering, where your utility essentially runs your meter backward when you generate excess power, giving you full retail credit. However, some states like California have moved to net billing with lower export values, and others are considering similar changes. Here's where west-facing arrays become strategically valuable. They generate power during late afternoon and early evening when electricity rates are highest in time-of-use markets. In states like California, Arizona, and Texas, peak electricity rates from 4 to 9 p.m. can be 40 to 50 cents per kilowatt hour, while midday rates might only be 15 to 20 cents. A west-facing array captures that premium pricing window perfectly. Even if you're on traditional net metering today, many utilities are moving toward time-of-use rates and reduced compensation for solar exports. A west-facing array future-proofs your investment by generating power when it's most valuable, not just when there's the most sun. Um, keep in mind that these results will vary based on your location. Southern states like Arizona, Texas, and Florida will see higher overall generation numbers, while northern states might see smaller differences between orientations due to lower sun angles and more seasonal variation. The east-west advantage tends to be most pronounced in sunnier climates with significant time-of-use rate structures. Before deciding on panel orientation, check with your local utility about their rate structure and solar policies. If you're on a flat rate with good net metering, total generation matters most. But if you're on time-of-use rates or facing net metering caps, the timing of your generation becomes just as important as the total amount. Hopefully this video shows that a south-facing roof isn't a must for solar. In fact, an east-west setup can be even better if you maximize both roofs. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.